Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I have a great video for you today? I thought I'd be sitting out here uh, in front of my house and I've been getting a lot of uh, questions. And you know I love to answer the questions. I like to do it the best way possible because I like to tell it like it is. That's the key with me. Before I get started, please check us out on YouTube. Please check us out on Patreon, our member programs. We have them everywhere. Please check out all the links below, people. Please check them out. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, I very rarely ask you, please subscribe and if uh, pass it on too. Put it in your playlist. First question. If a mob boss and a gang leader had a beef in prison, how would it go down? You know, you very rarely saw like a, a mob boss and a prison gang leader, or they call them shot callers or whatever it is, actually have a beef. If they had a beef, they would what they go walk and talks, walk and talk on the yard. They'd figure it out because they don't want any problem because most of the guys in prison have some hustles. You know, the, the, the gang leaders, the mob bosses, the... Uh, have, have stuff going on, whether it's drugs, whether it's uh, gambling, whatever's going on in prison, we have it in there. So they don't want a big beef like that, you know, as far as, you know, one guy killing another guy. That ain't going to happen. There's too many people involved and somebody's going to want to make a name for themselves, just like the streets, and stop that fight. That's for sure. So that's how I can answer that. What kind of contraband made it through the mail? Great question. The main contraband that got through mail was acid and uh, acid would be on cards, acid would be on the back of stamps. Uh, acid is uh, passed through the mail in a lot of different ways. You're not gonna see heavy stuff like actual drugs come in the mail, nothing like that. The only way that could happen is if uh, the guards are in on it and then they actually deliver it to the cell. So the mail uh, was a spot that we knew certain guys would get acid in and the whole card, let's say a corrugated card, from uh, acid would be soaked in acid, the whole card would be acid. And then we would cut it up and it, it would be a lot of wild stuff in prison and that, that happened a lot, that's all I can say, that did happen a lot. Can you give any tips of, or, for how a fish can avoid being targeted their first time in prison? And how would you go about making friends? Making friends in prison is not like something you wanna do. Uh, you want acquaintances, but you will get friends. You will become friends with people and it takes time Now how can a fish avoid it? Listen, it's tough because trust me no matter what you think you know or how you're gonna act We're gonna know you're a fish. You're we're gonna know you're a first-timer and with that said that's it is hard to hide now. How should you handle yourself? You stick to yourself you <laughs> Always know your surroundings uh, understand where to go, where to sit, who to know. You'll meet one cellmate or somebody who'll give you the lay of the land, if you want to call it that, and that's real important. Uh, but you don't want to uh, act like you know you're a tough guy or some shit like that, because that's another tell that you're nothing. You know, the quiet one who handles themselves like a convict. That's the kind of guys that that are going to do better in prison, and especially a first-time offender uh, or a first-time guy going to prison for sure ever see two guards fight uh you know i see two guards argue uh, i never see two guys have a fist fight uh but in fact my friend gary massey who's a guard uh, that i talk to now all the time he's a real good dude and uh i've heard stories of him kicking somebody's ass and wanting to have a fight with the guy because you know he didn't want to do whatever he was supposed to do in the prison uh, now they have their fights just like inmates have people are people man how they handle their differences is what really counts. Did you know anyone who was really good at medi mediating between two groups or people? How did it go? Yes, me. Uh, I had a really good knack for that and here's why. I pulled paperwork. I pulled paperwork on people in prison so I knew all the shot callers or the gang leaders or the, uh, the mob bosses and I would pull someone's paperwork. Matter of fact, one time I actually was uh, asked by the prison to see what you can do to stop these two gangs. Two, uh, it was the uh, Aryan Circle and the Aryan Nation. Don't ask me why they were fighting and this stupid shit over crap. And uh, you wonder what the hell are you doing? There's so many uh, people in prison that we need to fight for each other. We don't need to fight each other. We need to fight with each other against the system. And what I mean by that is not to attack the guard or something like that, but we need to stick together. No matter what it was, we needed to stick together. Here's a funny one. I'm ugly. Will it be safer in prison than a good-looking guy? 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you're ugly. I think everybody has their own uh, beauty, if you want to call it that. And I mean that. Now, if you got a hot, good-looking guy, like the guy in my uh, Manscaped ads, uh, I tell Alex, I said, listen, Alex, don't go to prison. Because you're going to be somebody's bitch or somebody's going to want you. And they're going to try to get you, whether you want it or not. That's just the way it is. So I wouldn't say... You know, you're better off being ugly or something like that. I think it's how you handle yourself, how you carry yourself that means everything in prison. Uh, that is the key, and, and I think everybody needs to know that as well. What were funerals like in prison? Did the guards let you all have funerals, or were they just like special inmate gatherings? What happened while these funerals took place for inmates? They didn't let you have a per se funeral. The chapel would have a mass. Uh, and uh, everybody would go or friends of that person would go and it would be packed because especially if he was a good dude and he was a convict and everybody knew him that happened all the time they had if you want to call it a, a, a celebration of life mass or something and if he was Jewish it would be a Jewish ceremony a Muslim it would be a Muslim ceremony uh, uh, Christian it would be a Christian ceremony whatever it would be Indians had their own Everybody had their own, and we'd all go to them if they were a good dude. Nobody questioned what they were and, you know, stuff of that nature. How were wise guys mobsters treated in prison? You know, they're treated pretty good, and I don't mean pretty good. They're just like another group or gang or whatever you want to call them. They get their respect because they give respect and they know how to handle themselves. Uh, and it's like anything else, you know, the mob there was a little too much politics for me. Everybody don't, you know, got to the point when you know everybody and you'll hear one guy say, hey, don't hang out with that guy, don't do this, get the fuck out of here. I never wanted to hear that shit, uh, just I didn't, uh, it, uh, you know, you got to try to make it in prison your own way. Uh, but you respected people out of what they did on the streets or what who they were in prison Just because it's life people get respected. I got respected every prison. I went to I was a convict people got to know me and And they respected me as being a convict and, and that goes a long way Larry What was one time you thought you would have to get rid of you know like kill a crew member because you suspected they snitched? You know, I never suspected somebody snitched I would have read that. Now, I did have cases where I didn't know uh, if this guy's going to make it or not. The guy that messed up a robbery is one, uh, and, I, and I had to stop people from doing the wrong thing. Because I had alternative plans for that. I was smarter than that to, to, to let one person hurt me like that. And I wouldn't let anybody who snitched, uh, or even if they thought they could snitch, have enough information to hurt anybody else. Yes, people knew things, but they only knew so much, and that's important. So I kept certain things that were very important to me about, especially about uh, the other ways we did things against other people. You know, the mob had it right with, uh, you know, being a made man and a murder, which I was not, and I could not be, uh, but I understand it. But even that fell apart. Look at them all now. Uh, that, that's just something they do. What do prisons do during evacuation situations such as hurricanes or wildfires or flash floods? You know, I've been in prisons where a hurricane was coming. And they batten down the hatches as much as they can. Oh, everybody's cleaning shit off the wreck yard. They're bolting everything. But you are in your cell. And to be honest with you, the wind would never hurt you in a prison. That prison ain't going, uh, isn't going anywhere. It's built with fucking bricks and steel and everything. If you want to be secure during the hurricane, you want to be in a prison, to be honest. Now, afterwards, if they didn't have water, if they didn't have sewage and stuff like that, then it gets dicey. Uh, and I've heard stories in Beaumont, Texas, during a hurricane. It was so bad. People were coming up with lawsuits because they didn't feed people. They didn't forget showers. Uh, it's an emergency situation, and the prison's going to do But they're not transferring you. They're not like saying, oh, let's just close this whole prison down and get them out of here. I don't care where they are, but they build these prisons in places they know they can withstand stuff. Obviously, as climate change gets worse and things get worse, it gets worse. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but it, they, they don't give a shit. Do you think it's possible to steal gold from Fort Knox? If not, or if so, why not, and how would you do it? No. Uh, obviously, there's, where there's a will, there's a way. It would probably cost you more money than you can get. And if you have that money, why are you going to do it? 
uh, unless there's an inside job like Luthenza was in back in 1978 or 77, 70, what I think 78. Look it up. Luthenza was the cash heist in uh, Kennedy Airport, and uh, unless it's something like that, we have the inside guards and everything else. You're not getting away with one of those. It's not like you can attack it with anything. It's not a GTA uh, heist. Did you ever turn to religion in prison? Why or why not? No. Uh, first of all, I have my own spirituality. Uh, a yes, I was in the hole when a buddy died, and I asked God, why me? And trust me, I, I really believe I heard him tell me, I have plans for you. I really believe that. And... Uh, so, but I didn't turn to religion. Like, I didn't need that religion as that crutch. Now, people do, and that's okay. I'm not knocking that. And people find God in any way they want, and that's up to them. It's everybody's personal belief. It wasn't mine. Uh, I am spiritual, if you want to call it that. I love the philosophy of a Buddhist, which is pretty much love and be loved and don't get things, uh, uh, let them upset you. What people do and why they do it is their own thing. I had my issues with with uh, the Catholic religion because of abuse. Uh, and, you know, I feel for anybody. It took me a lot of long time for myself to come to grips with all of that. And I think it's important. What if you were to meet one of your robbery hostages today? What would you discuss with them? Great question. First of all, I'd apologize. Uh, and hope that they're all right. Let them know that I rehabilitated and people do change. And I hope the trauma isn't still affecting them. But uh, you know, if it is, they gotta they gotta work on that themselves. I can't help them. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not proud of that part of my life. You know that. But uh, I would totally apologize and, and try to explain to them that people are, you know, change. And uh, I was a bad guy back then, and I'm not the same man. I've always wondered what your plan was if my mid-robbery a cop walked in on you. Would you cuff him? Would you run? Would you surrender? You know, that all depended on how he walked in. If he walked in like a regular customer and he didn't know the robbery was going on, I'd, I'd cuff him up and, and get out of there as quick as I can, obviously knowing that he might be monitored or whatnot. Today they got body cameras. Back then they didn't. Uh, but I would never have shot a cop. I would have never... Uh, just surrendered right then and there without having thinking about it for some way uh, but it all depends on the situation on how the cop came in that's what mattered were you always a leader with your non-criminal friends when growing up you know I don't know if I was a leader I was my own mind uh, I was a little bit a wild child uh, I like to fight I was fighting like a hornet I was a little guy so I had to stick up for myself when uh, my brother was older so when I used to get picked on, I would fight, man. I didn't give a shit. You know, I didn't care. I went after guys with knives or or uh, scissors or whatever I could, a board or a stick. I used to I used to have that in me. Now, I'm not always promoting that at all. It's just the way I grew up and where I grew up, and that's just the way it was. You said you're an avid reader. I was wondering, one, what were some of your favorite books that helped and entertained you most in prison? Two, do you have any recommendation for books? Wow. I used to read an almanac. I used to get the updated World Almanac, and it helped me because you ended up, you know, getting knowledgeable about a lot of things, which is pretty cool. And I literally read the almanac cover to cover. But I also love, like, stupid novels. I love Tom Clancy. I love Clive Cussler with a character named Dirk Pitt. At one point, I was reading sometimes a book a day. A book. And I'm not a fast reader, per se. I'm not a speed reader or anything like that. I just got into the books, and i rather read. And when I got a good book, I made sure it didn't end if that makes sense. What I did was uh, I would like close the book and maybe try to do push-ups or a workout or something so the book wouldn't end. I love a good book like that. To this day, I like that. Hey Larry, what do convicts do to those that abuse their own or others' children? Physically, emotionally, sexually, etc. Like a father or grandfather is charged for negligence and or type of abuse and endanger to a child. Again, that all depends on when I pull paperwork, you know, beating your kid's ass is not a crime. Uh, if they put that in there to just to fuck you over as, a, as the, the authorities will, that's one thing. But if you had sex with an under 12 year old, I don't give a fuck who you are or who the person was, you're done in prison. 
and that's pedophilia and pedophiles aren't welcome. Is there anything you look back on fondly in your time being in prison? You know what? I learned a lot. I met some good people in prison. Uh, I have friends to this day from prison. So I look at that as fond, uh, I guess you can call them fond memories. Uh, but the prison place sucks. The, the food sucks. The accommodation suck. Being told what to do sucks. All that shit sucks. So none, no fond memories. The fondest memories, the people you meet and the good people you meet. That means a lot. My uncle is in prison and never answers my mail. Should I keep writing? Yes. I tell people who have a relative in prison to get a letter or get 52 letters, envelopes, get 52 stamps and, and stamp them and then write them once a week. You don't have to write long letters. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I have nothing to say. You just tell me how the day is, the grass is green, you know, I'm doing great, uncle, or whatever, whoever's in prison. I think that's important, I really do. You need to connect with people in the right way, but I definitely don't think you should have to, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, not mail him, because you don't know why he's not mailing you. Maybe his mail is being held up. Maybe he don't have money for stamps, believe it or not, yes, even stamps, and you say, well, I'll send him money. Well, they might need that money for ramen noodle soups. And, uh, you know, they're, they're living there, surviving in prison. So please don't give up on them and keep writing. And it'll help you as well. A lot of people don't understand that. It will definitely help you. How long after you make an FCI are you able to contact family and loved ones? Also, do you know anything about FCI McDowell? I don't know anything about FCI McDowell, but I can tell you how long it takes. When you get to a prison, you get a phone code number. Now it takes that phone code number a few days or more just to be put on. Your counsel puts that on. And you'll harass your counsel. Hey man, can you put my phone on? Put my phone on. Because you can't make a phone call. Now if you have a really cool counsel, he might let you make a phone call uh, out of the counsel's office. Uh, but for the most part, you know, you're going to have to wait a few days at minimum. Sometimes a week. Uh, before you can contact anyone. You might get somebody you know in a prison if you're like me and you've been around a while to say, hey listen, can you have your wife call this number and just tell them I'm okay, I'm here, I'm at uh, Coleman or Jessup or wherever I'm at and that would help because then you're at least in the back of your mind, your, your people know where you are. And then you, when while you're doing that, because you have to put the phone numbers on a list, you got to get them approved. So it's not like I just want my phone on and I could call any number in the world. No, you have to have phone numbers approved. So uh, once you get your phone in and your visit in and it's all approved, then you can get visits and make calls and it, it eases things in. But it's not like they're jumping for you. It's not like they're going to say, oh, Lawton wants his numbers on and his visitation on. They don't give a fuck that much. Trust me, they don't give a fuck that much. How did you get to a point where you stopped caring about what people think of you? Did prison time also help with reaching the, that mindset? You know, that's a great question. Yes, I agree, prison helped me. Listen, I was in prison. So what are you gonna do to me? What are anybody gonna do to me? Uh, I respect people and I wanna be respected back, period. Uh, and now, as far as my mindset about who I am, what I did, what I look like, everything else, again, I don't judge people and if you judge me, Go, go fuck yourself. I'm not, I don't care that you judge me. It's just that I'm not going to associate with you. Uh, so my mindset was always, listen to me. How long are you going to live with, in living on someone else's terms? And you, as a person, have to decide what's more important. Do you want to live the bullshit yourself for the, for the rest of your life or whatever it is? Now, I understand perceptions. I understand business. And I understand jobs. But long as you know who you are, inside is what counts. That's the key. If you do, you're going to be a, a lot better uh, person for it. Always remember that. What's the nicest thing you have seen someone do for someone in prison? You know, we all have chipped in to help people. Uh, I was given a bag of goods when I hit Atlanta by Vic Arena. I thought it was the great thing. Uh, it helped me get through that initial hard part of a really hard prison. Uh, we've done that for others. I think the nicest thing we've ever done and I've done was help a guy read, uh, teach him to read and get his GED. 
uh, to this day. It's so probably the most proudest moment I have in prison because that man cried at his graduation and he actually said, uh, listen, besides my family, this is the happiest day of my life. Now, this is the guy with a life sentence in prison. Think of that. So I think that that's about, you know, the best thing I can do, think of in prison. And, you know, I'll end there. And I love these question and answers, and I'll do more of them. I think it's great. Uh, I think people need more of a... Uh, uh, to know about these things this way without getting arrested and knowing about the hard way. I want to thank you guys again for listening. Uh, you guys are great. All you guys, all your support, all my subscribers who I consider family, uh, Discord, everyone, all you guys, are, you, know, you, may, you mean a lot to me. You, know, you don't realize it. So I uh, hope you learned something today. Don't make bad choices, please. Check out all stuff in the links below. And my book is there. You can learn a lot from that. There's other links there to my video and all that kind of stuff. So do that. And have a great day, man. Uh, thanks for watching. Really much appreciated.